Hi everybody, Johnny here. I hope you're doing great today. You can find more good math at jmathpage.com. Today we are talking multiplication. And we're going to be thinking about three different things. We're going to be thinking about multipliers. We're going to be thinking about multiplicands. And we'll be thinking about the commutative property. Now, I'll explain all of these as we go along today, but let's start with something familiar. Since we're talking about multiplication, let's start with some multiplication. How about 5 times 3? Now, 5 times 3 seems like an obvious thing, but let's think about it a little differently now. I'm going to say it two different ways. Listen to the first way I say it. 5 times 3. Now listen to the second way I say it. 5 times 3. The first way I said it, I said 5 times 3. The second way I said it, I said 5 times 3. Now, you're wondering about this. Aren't they the same? Well, they're a little different from each other, just in the way I said them, but in the way we can think about them, too. So let's try this out. In the first one over here, I said 5 times 3. What I'm saying is I want the 5 to be multiplied 3 times. So 5 is going to be multiplied 3 times. 5 and 5 and 5. Over here I said 5 times 3. This time I'm saying I want something done 5 times. And what do I want done 5 times? I want 5 times 3. So this one looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So in just the way I said them, I've changed what they look like. Now you're wondering, what's the big deal? Well, let's use some of the words I put up at the top at the beginning here. In this case, 5 was being bossed around by the times 3. So the times 3 we'll call the multiplier. Now the one that's being multiplied is the other word we have for today, which is the multiplicand. So the multiplier is the boss saying how many times something else will be multiplied. So in this case, 5 was multiplied 3 times. Let's look over here. In this case, when I said 5 times 3, I made 5 times the boss of the 3. So the 5 times in this case is the multiplier. And the one that's getting multiplied, the 3, is the multiplicand. Now, what's the big deal here? Well, let's see. In this case, when the multiplier was 3 and the multiplicand was 5, we ended up with 5, 5, and 5, or 3 fives. We can add them together, 5 plus 5 plus 5, and we will get 15. If we come over here, where 5 was the boss, we're saying 5 times 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 threes. We can add these together again, 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, and we also end up with 15. We end up in the same place, but in a different way. This is going to help us with the next thing that we're going to look at. Let's try something different. 
Let's start with this statement again, where I said 5 times 3. And we've already said that this time, in this way of looking at it, the times 3 is bossing around the 5. So the times 3 is the multiplier, and the 5 is the multiplicand, the thing being multiplied. But what if I decided to move them around? What if instead of putting the boss at the back here, I put the boss at the front? And I put the number that's being multiplied at the back. In this case, I have 3 times 5. Did you hear how I said that? 3 times 5. In this case, if I go 3 times 5, I will have to write out 5, 5, and 5. The 3 times is still the multiplier. And the 5 is still the multiplicand, the thing being multiplied. Okay, so far so good. But what about this one over here? Let's try this one too. We started with 5 times 3. And we said that the 5 times was the boss making the 3 multiplied 5 times. So we'll have 5 threes. But what if we do the same thing again? What if we take the thing being multiplied and put it at the front? We'll put the 3 in the front here. And we'll put the, the boss, the multiplier, at the back. What happens here? Well, now we have 3 times 5. And when this happens, we can say that we need to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 threes. Looking familiar? In this case, the 5 is still bossing around the 3. So the times 5 is still the multiplier, just as it was here. And the 3 is still the multiplicand. It's the thing being multiplied. All right, so far so good. How does this help us? Well, 5 times 5 plus 5 plus 5 gives us 15, yes? 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 also gives us 15. And we know that 15 is equal to 15. So it doesn't matter what order we have these in. We always end up with the same result. So this is special because this is the commutative property of multiplication. And it allows us to move the numbers around and still end up with the same result. Now let's think about this for a moment. We started with 5 times 3, and we said that's the same as 5 times 3. Well, we can write both of them like this, right? Five times 3. Whether we say it 5 times 3 or we say 5 times 3, it's the same thing. But we just showed that we can write it the other way around too. We can take the multiplier and make it first, the multiplicand second. We can take the multiplier and have it second and the multiplicand first. So it can be the other way around. So we've shown that 5 times 3 is the same as 3 times 5. So let's write that down. And because 5 times 3 equals 15, and 3 times 5 equals 15, and we know 15 equals 15, we know that 5 times 3 is equal to 3 times 5. So now we know about multipliers, the bosses, the ones that are making the numbers being repeated, multiplicands, the numbers that are being written again and again, multiplied. And we know a little bit about the commutative property, too. I do hope this has been helpful to you. Find other videos, too, at jmathpage.com. You have a great day.